Hey guys, thanks for watching my tutorial videos and while you're here, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you get notified as soon as I upload a new video. Now, in the last couple of tutorials, we talked about XGBoost. In fact, in the first one, we talked about what XGBoost was, which is basically uh, a optimized version of gradient boosting. And it's very similar to, you know, the thinking that goes into your random forest, for example, but this is a much evolved version of that. So oftentimes XGBoost performs, uh, you'll find that it performs much better than random forest. So any application where you think of random forest, think of uh, uh, using XGBoost instead to uh, optimize it for speed and possibly also for accuracy. Now, uh, in the last video, we used XGBoost for semantic segmentation where we did pixel level image classification. Now, in this video, let's actually look at image level classification, meaning you have an image, you say, hey, is this a barn, is this a dog park, is this a landscape or a sunset? Okay, this is our classic image classification. And normally, I would like to use uh, uh, deep learning for these type of tasks. But what if you don't have millions or thousands of images that typically uh, are required for deep learning? then uh, you'll find that the accuracy that you get with tens of images, okay, uh, with XGBoost is probably far superior to what you would get with deep learning. So anytime you work with limited data, always think about XGBoost as the first option. And if it work, I mean, if it doesn't work great, of course, uh, uh, try deep learning, but I'm pretty sure deep learning would uh, not be enough sometimes if you have uh, just only limited amount of data. But anyway, given, even with lots of data, XGBoost is probably not a bad choice, okay? Uh, um, now, in this video, let's look at uh, this specific image classification example using XGBoost. And uh, anytime you're talking about classification, you have an image. Image classification, you have an image. You're extracting features and using those features to, uh, as, uh, to model, you know, in this example, using XGBoost. So how do we extract features? Well, you can develop, you can you can build your own, you can engineer your own feature extractor. But here I'm going to use VGG16 pre-trained network, which makes it easy for us to extract these features without defining a lot of a uh, 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 lot of code, I should say. So let's jump in and uh, just start uh, looking at the code. Okay, so uh, before again having a quick look at the code, let's see how our data looks like, and it's in a couple of folders. One train and I have four subfolders barn dog park landscape and sunset in barn as you can imagine I have all the barn images I have about 78 uh, of these images here and uh, probably for dog park again 75 or so so for each of these class I have about 75 images that I downloaded from uh, Google search okay and I place them in a appropriate folder now if I go back to validation it's exactly the same structure except I only have a subset of these images like five images here Okay, for each of this. And the intention is to use train images, obviously for training and validation images for testing the accuracy. Okay, now let's jump in. Uh, I'm using TensorFlow 2.2, Keras 2.3, and Python uh, 3.7. And to install uh, XGBoost, go ahead and do pip install XGBoost. Again, I talked about this in the last couple of videos. And these are all the parameters that you can tune, but I'm not gonna change any of this. Of course, changing this, you can opt by changing this, you can optimize it. In, uh, you can try grid search to do hyperparameter optimization by changing the learning rate and a couple of these to find the optimal hyperparameters. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just look at a few videos before this in the playlist on my channel or just search for uh, uh, hyperparameter optimization or grid search in my, uh, in my channel. You'll find these videos. Okay, uh, step number one, importing the right libraries. Okay, so let's go ahead and import NumPy, Matplotlib, Glob, and OpenCV, and then the required Keras libraries and Seaborn for plotting. And we are going to import VGG16 from keras.applications.vgg16. So this one, we can import that with ImageNet pre-trained weights, which we'll see in a minute. And now let's define, this is just to see if the if I'm in the right folder, okay? So I'm reading the right uh, uh, folder, so my my directory path is correct. This is a sanity check. Oh, my size, I'm going to define it as 256 because later on I'm going to resize all my images to 256 by 256 because these are all Google search downloaded. So they're different size. I just want to resize them uh, to uh, make sure I can handle them as NumPy arrays. 
Okay, let's capture all the information about training images and training labels in uh, to list. So I started empty list here. And this for a loop actually goes through each image, each folder, for example, under train, right? Each of these folders, each of these four folders. And initially it splits that name, okay? And run this line by itself, which makes hopefully sense. So all I'm trying to do is assigning my label equal to whatever the folder name is. So in this case, the label is barn. So all the images in this subfolder, they'll be tagged with a label called barn. All the images in dog park, dog park, obviously, okay? That's exactly what that is doing. And then for each image in that subfolder, okay? Look at the JPEG image and then read it using OpenCV, resize it, change the color from BGR to RGB, optional step, but if you want, do it. And then once you're done with that image, go ahead and append it to train images, append the label to train labels, okay? So this, uh, sorry for explaining the trivial stuff, but if you just get started, maybe it requires some explanation. So now if you look at train images up here, I have 320 images, each image is a NumPy array. If you look at train labels, 320 labels, then the labels are barn, 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 and so on, okay? Now it's easy for us to work with NumPy array, so let's convert these lists into NumPy array, okay? It's just np.array, so there you go. Now if you look at my train images, I have 320 images, each 256 by 256 by three. And I have 320 entries for train labels and each uh, uh, and you know what they are, barn and dog park and so on. Let's do exactly the same for our validation images, including converting them into NumPy arrays. So pretty much the same operation for validation. Now, uh, our labels are barn, dog park, and sunset and so on landscape, but that doesn't work when we are trying to model it. So we need to encode it into values of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that gets achieved by scikit-learn preprocessing and uh, these lines and I'm doing it both for training and testing right I mean we have labels for training and testing so that's exactly what's going on here so if you look at test labels it's barn 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 dog park landscape and sunset if you look at test labels encoded it's zero one two three four I mean sorry zero one two three because we only have four classes okay so now let's define x train y train x test and y test in this normally I would split my entire data set into training and testing you know using uh, train test split but here I have my train images train labels test images test labels I'm just renaming them or sorry copying them into new variables that's what we are doing here why am I doing it it makes it easy to think about this with these labels at least to me okay now our input images are all 8-bit uh, integers these are all uh, input images, 8-bit images. Now, which means the values go from 0 to 255. So let's divide it by 255 so that the values are rescaled to values between 0 to 1, okay? Uh, we are not doing deep neural networks. With neural networks, you have to convert your Y labels into one hot encoded. So instead of 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, for dog park and barn and these, it, it's like uh, 100, uh, 0100, and uh, again, watch my video on what is one heart encoding. Again, uh, please search for it on my, uh, on my channel. So we're not gonna do that here, so let's skip that. Now is the time to load our VGG model. Okay, we have done this in the previous tutorial, so uh, let me quickly explain this again. We are importing VGG with ImageNet weights. We are not including the top. Top is basically the dense layers. We are not including it because we are only using it for feature extraction. And our input shape is going to be 256 by 256 by 3. And remember, VGG16, the original network, I believe, required 224 by 224 images, but that's only a requirement if you are using the dense layers, but if you are only working with convolutional layers, uh, this is the beauty of it, then um, you don't, you're not forced to, you're not forced to uh, those input, uh, you know, dimensions. Okay, so we need to import this. This may take, this may take a while. Oh, that's pretty fast. So it imported this VGG model. Now, uh, if you just import this, let's go ahead and print out the summary of VGG model. Okay, and then let's see. So if you look at the summary, look how the model is. The input is 256 by 256 by 3, and then convolutional 1, convolution 2, max pooling, con 1, con 2, max pooling, and all of these. And these are all the parameters or the weights in each of these convolution layer. So you have total parameters of 14.7 million, 
and total trainable parameters 14.7 million. That means uh, now this is a deep neural network. Now when you're doing it, it's, it's actually training this. We don't want that. We want to take a pre-trained weights and use it as feature extractor. So let's define that. For each layer in this model.layers, set that trainable equals to false. That means it converts that into non-trainable. Now if I print the model summary, you should see that trainable parameters are zero. Of course, you still have all of these parameters, meaning that many weights and biases, but they're not trainable. This is exactly what we want. So now when we apply or when we predict using this model, it's just giving us an output. There is no training. It's just giving us an output, okay? Which would be our features. That's exactly what we're doing next. Our feature extractor is vggmodel.predict on our training data. That's it, okay? So let's go ahead and run this. This may take, uh, this may take a while. Okay, so because it's actually working on 320 images each 256 by 256 by three. So at the end of this, we should actually get 320 images uh, or features of size eight by eight by 512. So that's like that many features. And that's exactly what we're going to use to train our uh, XG boost or random forest or whatever algorithm you plan on using. Okay, so this is, uh, this is pretty much it. So let's, uh, uh, wait a couple of seconds for this to be done and then uh, continue the video let me pause it okay it's then uh, probably took extra th additional 30 seconds or so okay so now let's uh, reshape this because if you look at feature extractor it's 320 by 8 by 8 by 512 okay now uh, random forest or xg boost they actually take uh, uh, you know images as uh, 320 by uh, you know uh, or x uh, you know, in a shape of two, for example, okay? So I'm going to do this 320 multiply by eight by eight and then leave this to 512. So all I'm doing is reshaping this in case I confused you, let's look at features, okay? So now you have 320 of these images and eight multiplied by eight multiplied by 512 is 32,768. Okay, so for each image, I have these many uh, features and then next image, I have that many features, right? So that's what my features are uh here and uh my again i'm i'm taking up more of this memory and i hope you are a bit more organized than me but uh let's uh, rename our features as x for training and then we'll have our y for training as y y train right we already have it so this is our x for training that's it so now we have our x ready where is it x for training 320 by 32,768 and y test which is for each of these 320 images we know exactly what the labels are so we are set now we can do random forest if you want but obviously this video is about xg boost so let's import xg extreme boosting gradient boosting right there and then we define uh, the classifier again i'm not defining any parameters in here if you want, you can play with various parameters, uh, learning rates and others. And now let's fit it for X for training and Y train. Uh, this is pretty fast, but still takes some time. So I'll probably, uh, I'll probably pause the video, but just to show you how it efficiently uses all the CPUs, I'll leave this open for a couple of seconds. So let's go ahead and run this line right there. Okay, so now you should see all of these 64 processors jumping up. I don't know how many I have, uh, not say 32, I guess, not 64. There you go. So all of these, it's that's the that's the best part. Is it already done? Oh, that's pretty. Isn't that fast? I mean, try this with random forest, okay? So it's already done. I was about to pause the video, but no need anymore. So now that the model.fit is done, let's go ahead and predict it on test data. We already have test, so we need to extract features first from the test data and then predict. So how do we extract features? VGG model.predict, right? This is our feature extractor. And then we are going to reshape it to the right shape, right? And then go ahead and model dot predict on these test uh, features, and uh, uh, which is fine. So now, if you look at prediction, now if you look at uh, where is it? Prediction right there. This gives you values of zeros, ones. There is a misclassification, I guess, and uh, twos. But uh, let's go ahead and do inverse transform. So it tells us whether it is a barn or dog park. Okay, so if you if I open the prediction again, now you see it's barn and dog park instead of zero, one, two, three. This is basically our encoding and now decoding or inverse transform. Okay, so let's check out the accuracy. How good is our accuracy? It's 90%, 0 0.9. Again, 
I recommend to uh, uh, work with more data. Right now, I only have 20 images for testing. So I'm pretty sure the accuracy is higher than 90%, but only with 20 images, this is what we get, okay? Uh, let's see where it's doing a mistake. So for that, let's use confusion matrix between test labels and prediction, which is uh, the original labels and prediction. Oh, sorry, I should have selected the, okay, there you go. Uh, and it created the confusion matrix and with the uh, Seaborn you can actually plot it. So let's go ahead and plot the confusion matrix and let's go to plots and there you go. So whatever the class zero, which I believe was barn, it's actually doing a great job, like five of these and five and five. The only place where it's doing a mistake is uh, uh, the one. I wonder which one is that, uh, test labels which is dog park. I think it's not doing a great job with dog park, but with others, it's actually doing obviously an amazing job. So only two images misclassified and that brings us to 90%, right? Okay, let's test this on a few images to see how it's actually doing. So that's obviously a barn, it's getting it as barn. Yeah, we have 100% accuracy for barn. And that's also a barn. That's also, why is it doing? I am trying to load these. Okay, this is where it got uh, misidentified. So the prediction is a barn. Probably it sees that thing over there, but it's actually label is a dog park. Okay, this could be even landscape. This is a confusing image that falls into many categories. Uh, no wonder it's misclassified. And this is a landscape. It got it right as landscape. Obviously, oh, that was landscape and it got it as landscape, sunset and sunset. Okay, I can do this all day, but uh, use this on your own data set. It doesn't matter. It can be cats, dogs. It can be uh, it can be a geological sample with texture one, texture two, texture three, biological samples. It can be, uh, it can be malarial infected cell versus uh, uninfected cells. So anytime you have classification, see if this, uh, uh, if this helps out. So thank you very much for watching this video. And again, in the next video, let's uh, cover a different topic. I think we talked about XGBoost enough and let's find a different topic that uh, you'll find useful. Again, please subscribe. Thank you.